Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor Kulbhushan Chandel from Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. Today, we are going to talk on module Leading Organization Change from Paper Organizational Change and Development. Let me discuss that what we are going to learn from this module. We will be assessing the role of leaders in organization change. We will be studying various phases of organization change. And finally, we will be understanding the perspectives of executive leadership through this very module. Let me define the topic first. The organizational models serve as navigational chart that help us to account for environmental factors both external and internal to the organization. Without leadership, planned organization change will never be realized. The leadership box in the burke litwin model is critical. It is the leader who articulates and brings together the external environment with the organization mission, strategy and culture and also provides a vision for the future. The purpose of this module is to define what the leadership add to explore the role of organization change leaders. As stated earlier also, without leadership, the organization change cannot take place. This is a strong declaration. So we will study the leadership in detail. Leadership. There is a school of thought that uh, embraces the argument that leadership is exaggerated and that leaders are not exactly influencing organizational performance. Jokaro in 2001 stated that organizational performance is strictly a function of environmental characteristics and contingencies. The various arguments influence the leaders as heavily dependent on measurements and method used by them. To be fair, leaders do not account for all or even the most of the variance in explaining the organizational performance. Leaders make a difference in terms of organization change. Leaders are not same as authority and are different from management. Jalejink was the first to specify the difference between leaders and managers. Leaders are more personal about organizational goal. They see no distinction between one's personal goals and organizational goals. But managers are impersonal about the goals. Authority is related to right to make decisions that are binding on others to use and distribute resources and to perform certain functions. Obloser differentiates three sources of authority from above, from below and from within. Authority from above is derived from a particular role in a social system. Authority from below is given by subordinates and colleagues. One's authority is either sanctioned or withheld from below. Authority from within drives from one's individual capacity to assume his or her own authority based on one's personality. Leadership is more associated with authority from below and from within and less with others from above. Leadership has more 
to do with the person and less to do with the role and position. Leadership is about the influence. To be a successful and influential, there is a requirement of the personal skills such as active listening, persuasion, empathy and being aware of how one as a leader is affecting others and in turn is being affected by others. Leadership also requires followership. A person may think that he or she is a leader, but if there is no one to follow, it does not matter what the self-concept of the person is. Thus, leadership is about influence, but that influence is a reciprocal process. Leadership occurs when a potential followers exist and wants directions. The senior people at a top level of the management are the executive leaders. We are less concerned with the leaders at middle level and at supervisory levels. It's not that the leadership is not important at these levels, but as the organization change progresses, these middle and lower levels becomes even more critical to the success of overall efforts. While studying the conceptual perspectives of executive leadership, Jokaro in 2001 has provided a useful uh, compendium of executive leadership. In a thorough review of literature, he has identified the four primary conceptual perspectives of executive leadership. Conceptual complexities. This perspective is based on the premise that organizations operate high, in a highly complex environment. Then it comes behavioral complexity. This perspective focuses on the leader's behavior in terms of the multiple roles he or she plays and multiple constituencies to be sought. With these many and diverse demands, the leaders must be capable of behaving in variety of situations. Leader must also be capable of balancing the competing demands such as mentoring and developing subordinates. Conceptual perspective continued. Strategic decision making. This perspective stresses on the importance of the congruence between the organization and its environment. Thus, the main tasks of the senior leaders in the organization are to monitor the environment, analyze potential problems, seek opportunities, formulate policies, and implement them in the time to come. The leaders must give emphasis on the cognitive abilities, functional expertise and motives. Then it comes visionary and inspirational. This perspective emphasizes Krishna, transformational and visionary leadership. The primary role of the leader is to develop a vision that focuses and motivates collective actions by the followers in the organization. Phases of organization change and leader's role. The description of the organization change and how to bring it in the organization are derived from the theoretical ideas and from experience in the consultation with CEO who serve as changing agent. Organization change is planned and is useful nevertheless to think about the planning in terms of phases. The phases are not discrete but they overlap. Uh, you can see here that employee change because they either have to change 
or want to change and definitely they get change itself. That passion is strongest as a change agent. The main phases of the organization change are pre-launch phase, launch phase, post-launch phase and then sustaining the change. Let me discuss the pre-launch phase. Leadership self-examination. Leadership is personal. The process concerns the use of self, how to pursue us, how to deal with resistance and how to be political, how to embody the vision where the organization want to be. Thus, it is important for the leader to take some time at the outset to reflect. This reflection can be considered in three categories. One, self-awareness. This is growing evidence that self-awareness is related to performance. That is high performance leads to have greater overlap between how they see themselves and how others see them. Then motives. Knowing one's motive is of course a part of self-awareness. But for the leadership purpose, the emphasis on which motives are more important. Oh, one for leading change, the institutional managers are the most successful because they encourage loyalty to the institution rather than on themselves. As a result, the successful managers creates a climate with clarity, team spirit and opportunities for accomplishment. The profile of the desirable institutional managers has three major elements. High need for power, low need for affiliation and high inhibition. The successful institutional managers are like and are more oriented towards the organization. They join the organizations and feel greater responsibility towards the development of the organization. They enjoy work. They like discipline of the work and they have a preference for getting things done in an orderly situation. They place the good of the organization above their self-interest. Then it comes values. The alignment of the individual needs and values with the organization's cultures is likely to enhance the motivation which in turns performance. This alignment is all more important for CEO and other leaders in the organization. If we are attempting to change the organization culture, then it is a matter of modifying the current values of the organization or establishing an entire new set of the values. This is the responsibility of the change leaders. The establishing process may involve many people. Then it comes external environment. Another important element of the pre-launch phase is for CEO and other top leaders in an organization is to monitor the information about the organizational external environment as possible. This include information such as changing customer needs, changing technology, changing government regulations, competitors plans and worldwide occurring changes in the economy. According to Michael Potter, it would also include understanding bargaining power of the customers, suppliers and unions, threats of new entrants into the marketplace and substitutes new products. The CEO and his team must determine how to respond to what the environment is informing them and how to establish a more effective alignment for their organizations. The pre-launch phase confirms the reality that for the survival, the organizations are dependent upon the external environment. The organization change occur 
primarily as a reaction to some change in the environment. Then it comes establishing need for change. If people in the organization see or feel the need for change, they are not likely to embarrass the idea. CEOs and other senior executives are often in a better position to monitor the external environment and therefore are likely to see the need for change and more clearly than the majority of the organizational members. Technical people down in the organization may see a technological change coming from the senior management. Often the sales force and others who are in direct contact with customers see a need to serve them differently before senior management. It is the responsibility of the CEO to communicate the need to organizational members. Then it comes providing clarity of vision and direction. The final point of the pre-launch phase is to craft a vision statement and in doing so to provide clear direction for the organization change efforts. It is the responsibility of the change leaders and CEO to see that both mission and vision are crafted because both set the tone and the clarity of directions. The second is the launch phase. Communicating the needs, it is the CEO who deliver the message about the need for change but not always. Then it is initial activities, a significant activity to conduct at the outset of the organization change is an event that will capture the attention, provide focus and create reality that the change efforts now launched is not merely an exercise. The early activity of the organization change can take a variety of forms. This launch phase is highly useful in launching a large scale and planned organization change. Dealing with resistance. Generally, the organization change is considered at three levels, individual, group, and larger system. As a part of coverage, the nature of resistance to change at each of these levels was included. The prudent change leader will be well aware of the nature of resistance to change and the different forms that this kind of behavior can take at the three organizational levels. Post-launch phase, multiple leverage. In large organizations, change is too complicated for one action to do the job. Many managers believe that changing the organization structure will be enough, but many studies have shown that the failure was most often associated with change of structure when was essentially all that occurred. Examples of levers for change from these case studies included the process of re-engineering, crafting mission statements and developing a new process of supply chain management, training and development, crafting corporate values and leadership behaviors. The second one is the taking the heat. When organization change is launched, it is safe to say that not everyone will be happy with the idea. In fact, some may be quite upset and angry, looking for a target, a person or a group to blame. The change leader is the most obvious target. At these times of opposing by the employees, the change leader must use his self-control and he can muster working hard to listen and not too defensive and to display the patience of his job. Then it is consistency. During the early days of change, the change leader's behavior is scrutinized by followers. 
behaviorally, what may be even more important to follower is the extent to which the leader's behavior matches her or his words. This is the essence of consistency in an organization change efforts. Then it is perseverance. Perseverance means staying the course. Many potential leaders hesitate when the going goes tough. For example, for a change leaders, the early days of organization change are easy as compared to the later ones. It is possible that after a year, the change efforts may have bogged down, the excitement is gone and the fatigue has set in. This is the time for considerable perseverance on the part of the change leaders. A part of leadership in an organization change effort is to stay on course, to continue to encourage people to execute energy and enthusiasm for continuing down the change path and to find ways to continue communicating the message. Then it is repeating the message. The message is the vision and mission. For an effective response towards the organization change, the change leaders should incorporate the vision, mission and values. The change leaders shall remind the people again and again. In addition to reminding, it is critical that the change leaders tell the story to followers in person, face to face, instead of informing by a web or a written document. Like for a child learning, the repetition is necessary. Similarly, in the organization change, with all its complexities, the focus, primary emphasis and explanation with regard to why we are going so shall be done. Sustaining the change. Unanticipated consequences. The paradox of planning organization change is a linear and phased way of thinking, yet realizing that the change process itself is not linear. This means that when the change is launched, equilibrium is disturbed and seeming chaos occurs and many different uh, reactions to, be, uh, to the disturbance happens simultaneously. Some examples of this kind of reaction includes uh, that uh, the different organizational units interpret the change vision and direction to fit their needs and uh, the implementing of their part uh, of change becomes different from all units. The desired and expected outcomes regarding a part of the overall change effort do not occur. The main point to remember is that living systems are quite capable of evoking new forms and solutions and of self-organizing with gradual movements. Sustaining the change continued. Next is momentum. Maintaining the change momentum is critical because the natural movement towards equilibrium has to be countered, finding new ways to recognize and reward change champions in the organization and celebrating achievements clearly helps to maintain momentum. To maintain the momentum, the change leaders must constantly monitor the organization's external environment, being alert to changing forces that require adaptation to ensure survival. Then it is choosing successors. Another form of countering equilibrium is to prevent homogeneity. This principle states that the change leaders would do well to counter equilibrium and sustain the change effort by infusing new blood in the organization. And then it is launching again 
new initiatives. Finally, it is critical to identify and implement new initiatives that will renew the organizational members' energy, spark new ways of thinking and continue to propel the organization further down its path to change after some unspecified time into the change efforts. These new initiatives need to be in line with original change objectives, provided the external environment is not signaling to the organization that something more drastic need to happen to ensure survival. Some of the examples of new initiatives in the service of sustaining the overall change efforts can be acquisition of another organization, creating new line of business or new product line, establishing strategic alliances or joint ventures with another organization, starting a new program that will help to improve quality and reduce costs. The important point is for the change leader to be clear and deliberate about disturbing system with new initiative so that equilibrium does not take over. Incidentally, it is imperative for the change leader to cause these disturbances even if the organizational members plead for the change to come to some end point or conclusions. Conclusions need to occur only for specific initiatives and not for the overall change process. Let's summarize now what we have learned in this module. To specify what the leaders actually do and what they need to do as change leaders, contrasts and comparisons were made between leadership and management, power and authority. Leadership was considered as uh, terms of transformational and transactional changes. An addition was made in this, uh, in this uh, regard, the point being that the executive was primarily focused. Obloser differentiates three sources of authority from above, from below, and from within. Authority from above is derived from a particular role in a social system. Authority from below is given by subordinates and colleagues. One's authority is either sanctioned or withheld from below. Authority from uh, within derives from one's individual capacities to assume his or her own authority based on one's personality. Leadership is more associated with authority from below and from within and less with authors from uh, above. Leadership was more to do with the person and less to do with the role and position. Leadership is about the influence and to be successfully influential there is a requirement of the personal skills such as active listening, persuasions, empathy, and being aware of how one as leader is affecting others and in turn is being affected by others. Leadership is also requires, the leadership also requires fellowships. A person may think that he or she is a leader, but if there is a no or one to follow, it does not matter what the self-concept of the person is. Thus, leadership is about influence, but that influence is a reciprocal process. Leadership occurs when a potential follower exists 
and wants directions. The senior people at the top level of the management are the executive leaders. We are less concerned with the leaders at middle level and at supervisory levels. It's not that the leadership is not important at these levels. But as the organization change progresses, these middle and lower levels becomes even more critical to the success of overall effort. For the emphasis of the work of uh, Jokaru was helpful in this regard. In, this, uh, in his survey, he gave perspectives of the executive leadership conceptual complexity, having to deal with even more complex and changing environment, behavioral complexities, having the multiple roles in dealing multiple consequences, strategic decision making, stressing the importance of congruence between the organization and its environment, and visionary emphasizing the charismatic, transformational, and visionary aspects of leadership. The point was made that what is required to be an effective change leadership leader is highly complex and demanding. So, all the four perspectives are important. The leader's role was specified on four primary phases pre-launch phase, launch phase, post-launch phase, and sustaining the change. It is clear that with respect to leading organization change, it has been focused that application and practice should be more emphasized than theory and research. Thank you.